Do you want to get more visibility for your ebooks in the Amazon store in front of ideal readers? Today, my guest is Dave Chesson, and he's going to share with us his insights into the power of AMS ads for authors. My guest today is Dave Chesson, the Kindlepreneur himself, whose passion and expertise lies in helping self-published authors master the marketing aspects of their business. And so Dave combined his knowledge and his uh, skills in Kindle publishing and website development uh, with his SEO knowledge and created KDP Rocket which is this great platform, this great software that can help automate certain aspects of the self-publishing business like niche selection, search keyword and category selection, uh, as well as keyword selection for AMS ads. And I'm especially interested today in talking to Dave about the power of AMS ads for self-publishers. So let's get right into it. Welcome, Dave. Hey, thank you so much for having me here. Yeah, thanks for being here. Um, I think it'd be great if we could start by uh, just going into your background a little bit. Uh, what got you interested or starting to get into uh, publishing with Kindle? Um, and how did that kind of transform to you developing KDP Rocket? Yeah, well, it really starts back in high school. I remember I had... Um, I just gotten this paperback from my English teacher. And I mean, it was, it was supposed to be about some kind of like emotional period in your life. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be great writer. And I'm going to sit down and write this thing. And I spent all these hours writing this paper and I got it back. And before I got to see my grade, the teacher said, Dave, you're going into physics, right? And I said, yes, ma'am. She goes, good call. And I got a D minus. Uh, so <laughs> Uh, English has never been my, my strong suit. Uh, I remember, you know, passing quantum mechanics, but, uh, barely passing, you know, English 101 in college. So the idea that I'd be writing books later in life was just like, seriously, now this isn't to say that what I've created has been bad, bad books or bad writing. Um, you know, my website, Kindlepreneur, we get 150,000 visitors per month to it. Uh, there's been millions of pages read. But the thing that what I'm trying to put out to everybody is that when you know what the market wants to read, when you know what they're actively going after, you don't have to be Ernie Hemingway. You know, you don't have to be um, the greatest writer out there. You just have to have the person that has the answers and, you know, is addressing that. And in the fiction world, understanding the way that people describe the entertainment they're looking for allows you to create something that really comes out. So when I decided I want to start writing, I spent more time kind of trying to understand how can I write a book that truly meets the needs of an existing market that wants to buy. And when I started doing that, that's when my book sales started, started just taking off and they have for a very long time. Um, just recently, we looked at the total amount of money I've made from just books alone and it's been over $300,000. Um, and that wasn't from one lucky book or anything. Mm -hmm. It was just knowing what people wanted and being able to be that person. Over time, my writing skills have definitely improved. And, you know, as we all know, we get better with practice. But for someone like me and any writer out there, uh, whether you're amazing or not, making sure that you get your book in front of the right reader is the most important thing. If your reason for that is for money, that's one thing. If your reason for is helping others, that's another but again, it comes down to just understanding the system. And so that's why I created KDP Rocket as well as Kindle Paneras to help authors understand that. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that makes so much sense. And that is such um, a needed platform, like to be able to help writers get their message in front of the, the right readers. And um, like you're saying, it doesn't, you don't need to be a literary genius in order to write a book that people are going to love and that is going to uh, bring them the transformation or the entertainment or the information they need. Um, a lot of forums and Facebook groups right now, a lot of the posts you see are about driving external traffic and bringing readers in and all of that kind of thing, um, which of course is very important. Um, but how does keyword selection in, in KDP affect the visibility of ebooks? 
And do you think search keywords are more important for like nonfiction versus fiction? So what's, what's that? Uh, what's the importance of, of keywords in KDP? One of the things I hear a lot of authors say is that, you know, keywords maybe works for nonfiction, but it doesn't work for fiction. And the truth is, uh, the answer to that is it's actually just as important for both. So long as people go to Amazon.com and search for a book by typing in something into the search bar at the top, keywords will always be a very important part to any book strategy. Now, their level of importance depends on a couple of things. It depends on you know, whether or not there's a market on Amazon and or whether or not you have an amazing skill. So what I mean by that is that if there are lots and lots of people looking for your book and there is no book for it, then I would say keywords are like the number one strategy you should focus on because I mean, you're gonna get natural traffic. But another thing I tell people too is that if you've done your keyword research and you find you know there really isn't a market for my book on Amazon, uh, the greatest thing about that is you now know that Amazon's not going to sell your book for you. You mm -hmm. now have to go out, find your market, grab them by the collar, and bring them back to your sales page. And I think that's a, a thing that a lot of authors are missing, whether or not you believe in keywords or not, mm -hmm. is do that research and just at least figure out if you have an ability for Amazon to promote your book for you or not. And that's what keywords are. Choose the right mm -hmm. keyword. Amazon chooses to put you in front of their shoppers. Their shoppers buy. Great. If you can't find one, then you will get no sales unless you now actively go find people and bring them to your book. Mm -hmm. So the answer is kind of different depending on the person, the keyword, and their skill set. Some people are just crushing it with like Facebook ads. Some have just a huge email, and it doesn't matter what they write because they can always direct the right people to the book. Mm -hmm. But for some of us, especially if we're just starting out or, you know, this is our first book, you may not have that masterful skill of being able to get super low cost per clicks on Facebook and being able to get anybody you want to your book and convincing them to buy right now. Notice that was a lot of steps in there, right? Yeah. <laughs> but to be able to start off by knowing you're writing a book where, okay, Amazon's going to show this book to people and these people are going to buy it because it's the right thing for them. That's a lot better situation. And maybe while you keep growing your books, while you keep writing more, you're gaining more email addresses, you're getting fans, you're starting to get noticed, you can reach out to your fans, and that's when you can start writing anything you want and you can affect your own sales. You know, you can do a great launch with lots of, you know, advanced review copies and all these other tactics that people talk about. You know, you can build towards that. So mm -hmm. everybody's in a different situation, but I think that keywords regardless should be something every author should analyze at some point. And mm -hmm. from that research, they can make the right decision on how to move forward with selling their book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot, of, a lot of sense too. So the keywords are something that from the get-go, any publisher, any author should be putting some uh, priority in the keywords and, and what they're choosing for their books. Um, and uh, with Amazon, uh, now we have the ability for Amazon to even give more visibility to our books by uh, using AMS ads, which is a pretty cool tool. Um, so why are AMS ads uh, effective and why should authors use them? Well, the best way to answer that first question is to try to compare it to like one of the more popular ones, which is Facebook ads, right? Mm -hmm. In Facebook ads, you have to create something that interrupts, and I call it interrupting advertising, but it interrupts somebody socializing, right? We go to Facebook not to buy something. We go to Facebook to maybe watch some cat videos, you know, check up on our friends, see what they, they ate last at a restaurant, whatever it be. We're there for something else. Well, your advertisement on Facebook has to stop them from doing that, convince them to leave Facebook, convince them that they now want to buy a book, and finally, you got to convince them to buy your book. That's a lot. That's a lot of steps. And some of the advanced Facebookers, you know, what they have really is a landing page with email. They get the person an email, then they write this big old autoresponder system to try to get them to warm them up to the sale or what have you. Like, all right, <laughs> we just had a lot of steps and it takes a lot of work to be able to get that right. With AMS, on the other hand, you're not having to do any of that. All you have to do is convince them to buy your book. That, just that one step. Because in AMS, Ad, Amazon is showing your book to people who are already on Amazon searching for their next book. You just got to convince them that your book is the one they should pick up and not some other book. So 
I love AMS because I'm marketing to people who are already ready to buy. I don't need to convince them of that. I just need to convince them that mine's the one they want. So if you're an author out there and you're saying to yourself, I've got this great book. I know people would love it, especially if they like that book or, you know, if they're looking mm -hmm. for such and such. If Amazon would just show my book, I'd make sales, then oh my Lord, yes, AMS is the answer for you. Mm-hmm. Because it's essentially giving your book visibility in front of an already warm audience. Right. right. And yeah. see, uh, organically, that, that word uh, in marketing organically means that like uh, without having to pay, just people naturally find your book. Well, when it comes to Amazon and organically showing up, okay, you're at the whims of Amazon. Okay. Amazon may later on be like, oh, let's try this new book. And all of a sudden you drop, you know, Amazon uh, may have these times where people like, look for something for a lot and then all of a sudden nothing. I mean, in Christmas time, right? I'm sure Christmas stories is a really highly searched term on Amazon. Mm -hmm. However, though, in June, not so much, right? Right, right? So you're at the whims of a lot of things. But with AMS, for the first time ever, you now have the ability to basically cut it out there, tell Amazon, all right, I'm willing to pay you a couple of cents per person you get to click on my book. Just put me up there. Mm -hmm. And Amazon is much obliged to not only take your money, <laughs> yeah. but get the right product in front of their customers. And, right. and I say, get, you know, get their money. But what I really mean is, is that it's not a very expensive thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think I'm going to go like, I'll wake up next morning. And if I didn't do it right, I'll use like a hundred bucks, man. I would love it if they would take a hundred dollars. You're going to find that when you get yeah. in, that's your hardest struggle. It's just getting you know, to reach your budget. Like mm -hmm. it's you're going to have to work hard to convince Amazon to show your book over others. So right. it's not going to, it's not like Facebook where you could wake up the next morning and your, your budget is empty in 24 hours. For sure. Yeah. There isn't that, there isn't that same kind of risk. Um, and do you think there are any instances where authors should not use EMS ads? Well, I think there are times where EMS ads provides more for one author than another. Okay. For example, if I was a fiction writer and I wrote a series, oh yeah, I definitely do AMS for the first book. Why? Because if somebody read the first book, they're more likely to buy the second, third, and fourth, which means that I can turn one AMS sale into like four different sales, which is awesome. Another way that somebody could get a lot more out of AMS is if they have an email subscription in there, okay? Like an opt-in or some kind of content upgrade. Mm -hmm. uh, right there, as many people who get my book, I'm gonna increase the number of people that sign up for my email list. I worked with uh, Pat Flynn of Smart Passive Income on his book, uh, Will It Fly? And he created a companion course, a video you know, online course for people to be able to take that just kind of presents the information in the book, but in video style, right? He was getting one third of every person who purchased that book was signing up for the companion course. And that kind of makes sense because mm -hmm. you wanted to learn something, you'd also probably want the free course that comes with it, right? So for him, it was super important to get that book in as many hands because later on, he basically culminated his, his relationship with them. You know, he had talked, he'd spent a couple of times sending out emails, teaching them more and more. And in the end, he had an advanced course that he was able to sell. And just in one weekend to that list alone, he was able to raise $124,000. So wow. it was worth every penny to get that <laughs> book in as many hands as possible. Um, whereas you might have somebody who, you know, maybe they make the book free <laughs> because they just want to be discovered. I would not mm -hmm. recommend paying AMS ads for a free book. Right. Uh, maybe they have a book that, you know, it's their first one and it's only 99 cents. You know, you're having a hard time getting a return on your, your effort. Um, but to the authors out there that have an email list that maybe have other things in the works, uh, have more than one book, they're going to have a much easier time getting a full return on their investment. But that's mm -hmm. not to say the first time author can't get a return on their investment from their first book. It's just not as easy. Okay. Yeah. That, uh, that definitely answers that question. Um, that's what I also have been um, instructing my, my students as well, that if you're gonna do paid advertising, make sure there's an opportunity for read through um, and that you are gonna give, uh, have a greater chance of the, the ROI there, right? And uh, right. because people, yeah, they love what you're offering, that you're advertising, they're gonna wanna keep reading. So you have to give them an easy opportunity uh, to do that. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Um, so you've talked to a lot of authors, a lot of publishers. 
You've seen a lot of people that are huge successes. You've seen people that have not been as successful, um, especially probably with AMS ads in particular. So what have you seen are the most common mistakes that authors make with AMS ads that often cause them to not be as effective? The number one mistake is, is that they set it and forget it. Okay. AMS is not one of those where you can select five keywords and then sit back and six months later, you're still in sales. It's just not that way. Uh, you have to um, sit down. I would say once every two days or three days, you know, look at your advertisement, make some changes, add more keywords, add more campaigns. Um, you're going to have a lot of churn rate on it. So approach it like it is a skill and not just something that you set it and then walk away from. Um, otherwise you're going to be, you, you probably won't lose any money, but you're definitely not going to make any money. Mm -hmm. All right. The second thing is, and I kind of hinted on it in the first one, which is treat it like a skill. Now in a skill, right? We don't just learn how to do something and then we have a skill. No skills are truly accomplished when you combine knowledge plus experience. And you need a lot of experience. It's not just try it once and then you're good to go. The people who are crushing it on AMS are the ones that have said, this is going to be my book marketing tactic, like my skill, my thing. And then they just continue to work on it and they learn, they learn from mistakes, they fail forward. And all of a sudden they start to have this intuition on what they need to do on their ads and they start having immediate positive ROIs and they know how to scale it up and start, you know, getting their book in front of more people and get more out of it. That's a big difference maker. Uh, a third mistake that a lot of people do too is that they, they will choose like five keywords and they're like, these are the only words that I believe fit my book. Well, I wish, I, I honestly wish I could like choose five keywords and say, Amazon, I'll pay you five bucks per click. And I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know, normally you're looking at like 15 cents to 20 cents per click. I mean, we're talking that low. So for me to say $5 would be insane. Mm -hmm. But even if I put my cost per click at $5, I probably won't even show up. It's weird. I don't get it. Um, you would think Amazon would be like, sweet, Dave, I'm going to take your five bucks. And we're gonna <laughs> go to, you know, we're going to go to a, a five-star restaurant here. No, they won't. I don't. It's frustrating. Right. Where most people are really making a lot is that they're really targeting as a lot of keywords. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking hundreds and thousands, not just a couple. Because you can target up to a thousand, is that right? Up to a thousand search a thousand keywords? Yeah. Per campaign. Per campaign, and yeah. Most of these guys have like 20, 30 plus campaigns going. And the reason why, and this is this is kind of the mentality I want anybody listening to this to walk away with, okay? Is that what's beautiful about AMS is that say Amazon decides to show your book a hundred thousand times. If no one clicks, you don't pay a thing. Mm -hmm. hundred thousand people just saw your book, but you know, all right, maybe they weren't interested. Maybe your book covered in entice them, whatever. But the fact is nothing happened. You got your book in front of a thousand, uh, you know, a hundred thousand people, nothing. Cool. But get this. If you get your book in front of a hundred thousand people and just 10 people click, okay, you're going to pay for those 10 people. But regardless of what they were doing when they clicked on your book, the fact is you found someone who saw your cover, saw your title and saw your ad copy and got interested. And at that point they then went to your sales page. Now from there, it really depends on whether or not your book description convinced them to buy. But mm -hmm. what's neat though is, is that you found somebody and you found it for cheap. Uh, the person might have gone on there because they were looking for their next romance, you know, but turns out your book on how to stop smoking, well, it actually stop smoking was something on the back of her mind as she was searching for this. Oh, yeah, that's a good call and looked at it. See, it's almost uh, in a way the best tactic is get it out there. Nobody clicks, no problem. But if somebody does click, then you found them. You found mm -hmm. someone who was right. They might right. not have been searching, but they were. So right. that's a really important aspect that authors need to understand. And like you were saying, those keywords, like choosing a lot of keywords is best because your buyers may come from somewhere really unexpected. Um, and so, but to find, say, a thousand keywords that are relevant to your book, that is a lot of tedious work to go into the store, look through the keywords in the search bar, look through the hot new releases and through the top uh, bestsellers in your category. Um, we're talking hours and hours of work. Um, and and but, more importantly, like I said, is you got to do that at least once every three days or two days. So <laughs> which is, which is crazy. It's hour. so crazy. Um, yeah. 
But the cool thing is KDP, KDP Rocket can do this tedious task for you literally in an instant. It is incredible. You put the keyword in and then it finds this massive list of relevant keywords for you just in an instant. So yeah. can you explain how KDP Rocket does this, how it finds the keywords for you? Yeah, well, the best uh, way to describe it is the way that somebody would do it manually. And then we're like, hey, we got a program. We can do this automatically. So when you're looking for the best keywords, okay, for your book, you want to start by getting Amazon suggestions. And that's by writing in a particular keyword in the search bar and then letting Amazon say, hey, you know, when people type this in, they also type these things in too. So now you want to start collecting all those up. But on top of that, when you have that one word, you want to then add an A and then a B and a C and a D all the way through Z. And I call this A through Z suggestions. And Amazon keeps giving you more and more suggestions. So you're going to put those into an Excel sheet. So now you probably got like maybe 30 or 40 Amazon suggestions total. And then on top of that, you want to go to those particular pages on Amazon. Okay. So type in that keyword, hit enter. And then Amazon presents you with a list of books and authors. You're going to want to copy and paste every book title into that Excel sheet and author name into that Excel sheet. Okay. You can go one page deep or two or however many you choose, but you can do that. Another thing is you go into those individual books and you look at the categories that they're a part of and then you click on those and you do the same thing to the category list. You copy the, um, you copy the title of the book, you copy the author name and you put that into an Excel sheet. Now you got to go back to book number two and do it again and number three and do it again and number four and do it again and number five and so forth, right? And that's just one keyword search. Remember we started with 30 to 40. Now do mm -hmm. all of that again for keyword number two. And you just have to keep doing those things over and over. And all of a sudden you will start to have, you know, seven, 800 keywords. And then after you're finally got them all there, you'll want to go through and check to make sure you don't have any illegal words like, you know, Kindle. Mm -hmm. um, like that's one that AMS won't allow. Mm -hmm. um, there are other words that they have in there that they're like, whoa, you can't do that. So now you got to go through, scrub them, check them, pull them out. Then after all of that is said and done, Okay, you also have to make sure you don't have duplicates. Um, there's a little hack on, on Excel to check for duplicates. I think it's like control MA um, mm -hmm. and then it will automatically like find duplicates and remove it. So that's not too much of a problem. But finally, when you have all that, then you copy all the Excel cells and you paste it into AMS and then click go. That's one campaign. <laughs> now go to campaign number two and do all of it all over again. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, that can just start to eat away time. I did a video on, uh, in my free AMS course, you can find it at amscourse.com, but I've got a video where I did all of that manually in one version. And then I was like, all right, I'm going to speed up the video and I'm going to fill it all in. And I had a little timer that was going off. And by the time I was done doing all of what I just said, an hour and 11 minutes had happened. Then I was like, in real time, I was like, okay, now I'm going to do that same exact search, but just using KDP Rocket. I typed in one word, click, and then I had the same exact list in, what was it, like eight seconds? So, right. I mean, when you, and then if you got to do like seven, eight, nine campaigns, I mean, that's eight, nine hours you would have spent it by hand, whereas, you know, maybe it's 30 minutes total with KDP Rocket. Mm -hmm. So, I got, I'm not going to lie, I added that feature because I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. this is ridiculous. And so... Yeah. yeah Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. Um, yeah, no Cause problem. like Crazy anyone who's came through. Woo. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> I, I've been, anyone who's been following me for a while knows I don't use a lot of tools um, as far as uh, for, for publishing for keywords and whatnot, but this tool for AMS ads is incredible because it makes, like you said, nine hours of work. If you can do nine campaigns, you know, it comes down to 30 seconds <laughs> for all of those, those different well, ones. So it's, it's amazing. another great question to say to people is how much is your time worth? Right. Yes. I have a lot of authors flat out tell me it's like, well, if I do all of these things, when am I ever going to write my next book? And I'm like, great, exactly. you know, we're authors. We, that's what we should be thinking. Like, I just want to write my next book. Yeah. Um, and so you need to ask yourself, so what is, what is it? What is your time worth? And mm -hmm. if you end up doing like three or four campaigns, you know, that saves yeah. you what, four or five hours. Yeah. And KDP Rocket is just $97. It's a one-time fee. We don't do subscriptions. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, will that pay for itself? And that's assuming that you, you know, um, let's add on there too, that you had highly profitable campaigns. I mean, it's very quick mm -hmm. that the program pays for itself not only in your own time, but also in helping you to get a profit.
For sure. Um, so I want to ask you, Amazon uh, for AMS ads, they do have an option where Amazon will do automatic keyword targeting for you. Mm -hmm. um, so is it better to uh, get your own keywords, like using something like KDP Rocket or doing the manual technique rather than relying on Amazon's automatic targeting? Yeah, so the bummer part about automatic targeting is that even though it's a lot easier and quick, um, that's the same words that they're giving to other people as well. So the competition is a lot higher, which means the cost per clicks are gonna be a lot higher. Um, you're gonna have less chance that you're even gonna get impressions as in you're, that Amazon's gonna choose you to be shown. A lot of where people are finding the best is when they're getting keywords that people wouldn't have naturally thought of when they sat down to type. Uh, again, with like Pat Flynn, when I did his AMS ads, our most profitable keyword was Ivanka Trump. <laughs> and and I, 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 to this day, I don't really understand that. No, his book, Will It Fly, is not a like, you know, conservative or political book by any means. Uh, really, his book is about how to figure out if your business idea is going to succeed and how to, you know, do better with it. Well, the thing is, is that nobody else, I guess, was, was targeting Ivanka Trump for keywords. So we got a lot of impressions and it turns out there were a lot of people when they were typing in Ivanka Trump or looking up something Ivanka Trump related that his book connected, like, you know, like, and he got a lot of sales just from that and he really paid little to no. If we had enough views like KDP Rocket to kind of pull that, we never would have figured out Ivanka Trump was a good one. Um, some people will even intentionally put in misspellings because let's face it, we're not the greatest grammar people, nor are we the best spellers when it comes mm -hmm. to search. We just quickly jab something in there and hit search and we're like, all right, algorithm, figure it out. You know what I'm looking mm -hmm. for. And so therefore, if nobody else is thinking to go and find these misspelled words, right? And you're the only person who thought about that, uh, you're not competing with anybody and you're having a great time because you're getting impressions for super cheap and you're not competing with somebody else. Um, I don't know if you can see in the background that uh, I have a baseball that's actually autographed by Mickey Mantle. And oh, I'm sorry, well, Mickey Mantle, but I also have another one by Joe DiMaggio. And the coolest part about the Joe DiMaggio ball was I got it for, um, for pretty cheap. And it's because I kept looking on eBay for the misspelling of DiMaggio. Awesome. <laughs> and sure enough, somebody finally misspelled his name. A little sad, sad story was it was a widower. And then she was selling her husband's collection. So I do kind of feel bad about that. But <laughs> the fact of the matter was, is that nobody was watching that ball because nobody thought to type in the misspelling. And it turned out it was just a, a bidding war between me and another guy. And I got it for like $200. And it's PSA certified wow. collectors out there. It's like, what? Wow. So good little tactic on eBay is go after the misspelling. <laughs> And that's kind of the same thing with AMS is that if, if I'm going after a misspelling and nobody else is even thinking to do that, uh, anytime somebody misspells, like, cha-cha, I got yeah. it, you know? And because nobody else is competing, Amazon's like, sure, three cents, whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And KDP Rocket will automatically bring up these keywords for you to use. Yeah, if people yeah. are misspelling, uh, Amazon's algorithm sees the misspellings that says, hey, people actually type this in when they're, you know, mm -hmm. and then it pulls those suggestions and you have that. Another thing too is, is that new and hot selling books, right? They've got a lot of fervor, but nobody's targeting them because they're new, right? Right. Well, KDP Rocket's pulling those in. And so yeah. now you're advertising next to a book that's getting a lot of traffic, but nobody knows about it yet like yeah. as a competitor. So, you know, again, those are where opportunities lie. And you may say to yourself, I don't get it. Like this book doesn't have anything to do with my book. <laughs> well, okay. If Amazon shows it for it and nobody clicks, you didn't pay anything. Cool. Yeah. But if somebody did, then it did. Whether you know why or not, mm -hmm. that's not how it works. That's it, awesome. I love it. Um, so you've had a lot of contact with uh, several hundred publishers, self-publishers, authors <clears throat> over the past few years. What would you say are the most important factors contributing to overall success of people who are self-publishers? What are those key factors that, that uh, contribute? Well, when it comes to self-publishers, um, I'm going to go back to that number two I talked about with AMS, and that's they've chosen a skill in marketing, and they've tried, you know, they've worked to master that. In the world of publishing, there's like a billion things you can do. And I feel bad because my whole website, Kindlepreneur, is like whole, you know, here's one exact tactic, step by step on how to do it. Here's another tactic. And the point is, is that I see the people who have real success are the ones that chose a tactic and said, this is going to be the thing I'm going to do. 
and I'm going to do it better than anybody else. And then they succeed. In my podcast, the Book Marketing Show podcast, I talked to a Sasser Hill who, you know, she said, you know, I'm going to focus on, I'm going to focus on the international markets, the, uh, I'm sorry, the other markets, not just Amazon. Nobody, everybody's forgetting about iTunes. I'm going to work iTunes. I'm going to make sure that I am the best seller in iTunes. And although it's a smaller market, guess what? Nobody else is doing it as good as she mm -hmm. is. She got a lot of sales because of that. Um, you know, somebody who says, I'm just going to focus on, on AMS and I'm going to work that they're going to see more success than the person who's like, all right, I'm going to go do a little bit of AMS, just set up a campaign, see what happens. I'm going to go to Facebook. I'm going to do that. Okay. I heard that I should go to Facebook groups and I'm going to go and talk to people. Oh, the forums, you know, don't forget about the forums. Hey, I should also go to, to websites and, and comments and I should do Quora and I should do all these yeah. things. And next thing you know, they're just spinning their wheels. They're also losing their minds. And they're getting nowhere. Mm -hmm. So I say concentrate, learn, grow, and develop that skill. And the skill you grow, you grow and learn from in book one will start to translate even more and more from into book two, book three, book four, until all of a sudden you have those assets like the email list. You have that fandom, the following, you know, the raving fans that will, you know, go pick up your book and leave amazing reviews without you even asking. Mm -hmm. things, um, but start with the skill. Yeah, I love that. That is so, so true. And another thing that I, um, I teach and recommend is that you look for things where you can um, get the most visibility uh, that you set up once and be becomes kind of automated or something that you can do that can make, make it so that you can save time so that you can focus on uh, the higher level uh, activities in your business, yeah. whether it be the writing, whether it be um, like the strategic planning of, of marketing or whatnot. Um, that's where KDP Rocket uh, is an awesome tool, in my opinion, for the AMS keywords itself, because huge, huge time saver. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for joining me today, Dave. This was yeah. so uh, informative and uh, really interesting, and um, I actually learned, learned a lot. So. Thank awesome. you again, and uh, we'll uh, talk to you again sometime. Again, Sounds great. And th again, thank you for having me. Okay, bye. Be sure to go down into the description of this video, click the link, and get my blueprint on how to go from book idea to Amazon bestseller. And if you want to see more videos like this, more interviews like this, be sure to subscribe to my channel. We'll see you on the next video.